Al Let's Ferrari. Let's talk about your Al Ferrari. Yes. So it's a, uh, it's a 1973 Alfa Romeo that was originally a two litre four cylinder and I stupidly got a Ferrari 360 engine that I shoehorned into the, into the front of it. And I haven't, uh, I wheeled it in the garage four years ago and I do everything myself. So I did all the, obviously putting the engine in and modifying, I had to cut the uh, inlet down 70 mil to get this, get this to fit in. And um, I painted it in the garage, I wired it, I sewed the interior, I did every part of the car. Every Everything. Single, every single so thing. So it took you four years four from years, start to end. Four years to start to finish, and I did, as I said, absolutely everything. From, from a rusty green wreck, cutting off everything from the B-panel back, B-pillar back, I had to remake the whole back end of the car, all the sills. It, was to, a, it, was, it, it wasn't was a, a running car, though. No, no, it was a rusty wreck car and, and I and I stripped it all down to, to bare metal and then did all the rust repairs and even to the extent of like, you know, I made the, this is all steel, like uh, bonnet, bonnet bulge and, and modifying the engine, wiring the ECU, because it no longer run, runs a uh, the factory Ferrari twin ECUs, it runs a link ECU, so that's... Uh, so the question is, why did you not start with a better chassis? Because they're all they're all pretty much junk. This old Italian Alphas are all rusted out. Even if they look shiny on the outside, often when you strip it down, it's it's still. Were there many of these sold in Australia? Yeah, they, they, they weren't that uncommon, but they're just all even here where we don't have salted roads and stuff. It still rusts out, so they're still a rusty old thing. It, it was just never meant to last this long. It, no. No, they, uh, they say that they, even the steel they started with was not the greatest, so they've just rusted from the start. So then tell me about the engine. How did you source one of these? It's not like you could just go to a junkyard and pull one out. Well, actually, there's an there's a, uh, exotic car wrecker in Adelaide that, that just buys exotic cars from all around the world. They had three, just 360 engines on the shelf, plus everything else you can think of. They had a, you know, a wall, you know, all the way to the pits, just just with exotic car engines. So the 360 engine was more, I like the history of Alfa and Ferrari. Enzo started at Alfa and the Scuderia Ferrari race team was originally the Alfa race team. And uh, so there's that history and even the current Alfa Formula One cars have Ferrari engines. So there's that history there. And it's actually a relatively affordable engine. I could have easily spent more just doing up the two litre that was in there than buying a 27,000 kilometer, you know, Ferrari engine, and these are quite reliable. So then the question is, I I'm assuming that if you went older or if you went newer, yes. it would be more expensive. Yes, this is this was sort of the perfect spot in age to get this engine because it's, as it, yeah, it's, it's, it's reliable, it's affordable, it's simple enough. I mean, it's a relatively simple engine. Wiring it was not, super complicated you know it's it's yeah because I'll, in a lot of people's minds this is pretty much the first modern ferrari engine yes it, it, it actually to be fair actually this is the last of that era of v8s and then the 430 went to a an all new engine so this has evolved over time to get to to this this engine and it, it, as far as things go, most of it's pretty much just a straight, you know, it's, it's eight coil packs, it's eight injectors. It does have twin throttle bodies, which is still their original throttle bodies, but... The fitment is really good though. It, it fit really nice. It's about 10 mil clearance everywhere. Because <laughs> one of the, the hard things is that the, 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 it's a factory dry sump engine and the dry sump tank sits on top of the gearbox in the Ferrari and it travels internally through the gearbox and through like just an o-ring on the bell housing so when you bolt the bell housing up the oil travels back in so i had to do that in the adapter so there's an the adapter plates a 50 mil plate and the oil tank i had to build a custom oil tank that fits behind the guards in here the dry sump tank sits in in there because there was nowhere else to get it. i can't get it to the back of the car everything is so tight so then with that said, when you're saying everything is so tight, how were you able to fit all the cooling in here? The cooling, at the front it wasn't too bad because it's still, it's still only four cylinders long. It's the same sort of probably similar length to the original engine, so that wasn't too bad. It's more the headers, like oh, custom yeah. making the headers are so tight. It's so tight. 
because Every, yeah. you have to clear the cross member, you have to clear yes. where it's actually mounted. Well, well that there is actually a uh, the suspension pickup, that's the top, the top arm of the suspension, so I had to clear that and make it get past, which is super tight. So it was it was a lot of work. So, but so were you just mocking it up when this was a bare chassis? Did you like take measurements, or did you buy the motor first? I took very very basic measurements, and I measured from from this rail to that rail. I could see that the engine just fit in, without headers on it or anything, and then I just made it fit. And is this the lowest you could have mounted it? Yes, like like I actually had to cut the subframe down and that's as and it's still only 10 mil off the bottom. And a, as it is, I actually had extra allowance in the bonnet and it and now now it's touching I have to actually modify these a little bit to actually get it to, to clear because it does it does touch. And, and you did this on purpose so people could see or is Absolutely. it Absolutely yeah yeah. So because it's Whoa, okay, so you did actually have to raise this. Yes, yes, I had to make, this is all handmade out of steel. Oh. I, 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 I made that, the bulge. That is so neat. So it, everything is, everything is, is, yeah. is, is, is this close everywhere. That is so cool. Yeah. So then, can you tell me about the transmission then? The transmission is Subaru BRZ. How did you figure that would work? Well, I needed a transmission that was small enough. I couldn't fit like a T56 or any of those big, they'd be giant, it's just, there's no room to play with. But I also needed a transmission where the starter motor mounted on the gearbox side, because it's not on the not on the engine. So there were lots of things. It's it's around the, the level of power for that gearbox, but that engine's low torque, a high revving low torque engine. So I think the gearbox should be okay, but there's also gear sets I can get for it. If if it does blow it, it's not the end of the world. Right. Let's talk about the body itself. Yeah. So did you change the body at all? I spent a lot of time, as you can see, if I can, all new seals, getting it perfectly straight. I did all the bodywork as well in the shed and painted it. Even the stripes are painted. Um, nice. And yeah, so from here back was damaged and rusted once we actually stripped it back. So I cut everything from here back off. And this is all new rear end that I've remade the whole back end. Oh, the, well, did you buy panels. like a spare You bought, you bought car? replacement panels, but but the, this is a separate panel, that's a separate panel, that's a separate panel. But now they're all welded together and they all have to be perfectly aligned with the window. And so I had to remake the whole back end and then make a lot of rust repair panels that didn't exist. And and then so the over fenders, those are aftermarket? Yeah, they, they are a period correct. So that's why they look different front and rear, but that was actually how they had them as the in the in the day. Huh. And Tell me about the wheels. And the wheel, the wheels are a replica of the original race wheels, but the, the originals were 13s and these are 15s. So uh, it's also running uh, six pot, like custom made six pot calipers on the front and four pots on the rear. It fits, it sits so nice. It's nice it, and tucked. It, it's getting it just right. It's only been on its wheels for a week. I've had four years, this is the first time in the last week it's actually sat on its own wheels and, and, uh, and I've actually managed to get it here, so. So what are your plans for it? Are you actually gonna drive this? Yes, I've built this. This has got air conditioning, cruise control, power steering. Where do you even fit the air conditioning? How did you it, fit that in I, there? It's, it's all custom, I had to make a custom unit. So the air conditioning is, I've actually, it's not in the car at the moment, but it's made. It's, it's, it sits just underneath here in the dash. There's a separate heater under here because I couldn't use the factory heater because I had to make the tunnel bigger to fit the transmission in. So, I, I did that, I've got uh, e the windows electric, even these rear quarter glasses are electric. You can see the, uh, the little uh, oh, actuators there. Oh, that is so cool. So everything is made to be a drivable, daily driven car. It's not just a slap together. So where is the condenser? Is it in front? The, uh, the condensers are underneath at the back. Oh, so I've got because two, there's not I've, enough room. I've, yeah, I've got two Porsche Boxster air conditioning condensers on either side and an electric compressor in the, in the boot. Oh, that is, that is so neat. I mean, for packaging, you couldn't fit. There, there's just no way. Like, yeah, there's, there was no room to fit. Even trying to fit the alternator was just a nightmare. Uh -huh. So, yeah, it all fits in the boot and it's all hidden up in, in, the, in the back, so. So Link is to use standalone to get it all to work. Yes. And then the interior, you did all this yourself yeah, so too? Yes, I, I sewed the sewed the seats and, and, so, and did the whole interior myself. Like, and it's all Ferrari leather. Yeah, it, it 
you took inspiration from. Yeah, yeah. So right. I wanted the Daytona, the Ferrari Daytona look, and so I, I, I took the all the inspiration from the Ferrari Daytona to make it work. Even the door panels. Yes. Amazing. So it's all... I, I can't believe you, like, Jack of all trades, you probably learned all this stuff oh, just for this. Yeah, this, this is by far the most advanced sewing I've ever done, and the wiring, I had to make a whole new body loom for this entire car, uh, and, and then wire the engine as well, and every single part, but that's why it's taken me four years to do it. So it's you, Alcantara headliner that I made. Alcantara, and yeah. then you made your own roll bar too? Made, yeah, made the roll, roll, the roll bar, made every, every part of it. So what color is this? This is this is actually Ferrari fly yellow. So basically, I had I only had one choice. I only had one choice of color to do because it had to be a Ferrari color, and there's only really two good Ferrari colors in my opinion. And it couldn't be red because they're all red. All these Alphas are always painted in red, and I couldn't do it the same as every other car. So it's it's fly yellow and. It doesn't fade away, it stands out. You're insane. Thanks, mate. What a great build. So, like, where did you get this badge? I got the stickers cut out by a sign writer and then actually used art epoxy, uh, like a two-part epoxy, and laid over the top to give that 3D effect and made the, made the badges myself, yeah, so. So same, so cool. same as on the, uh, on the boot and on the, on the grill at the front. What a beautiful... So, so even these grills, I handmade those grills out of brass and then got them chromed and, and then 3D, 3D printed. printed, I designed that up on, on Fusion 360 and then 3D printed the grills. Of course you did. <laughs> so, so, yeah, so. What an undertaking. I, I just, I can't believe. Everything is painstaking, but I like to learn how to do things. So and how much, how much left is on this? For it's you about a do? week away from starting. I did all of the, I did all of the engineering of it in before I painted it, so now it's sort of basically reassembly. It's just, I was just racing to get it here at the show. This is the last sort of bit to get it to, you know, ready it for the show. Great. I, I can't believe it. It, it. it must have been such a challenge too for you to get parts. Just, just to, I had to make everything. So, so you know, trying to make, make everything fit, make. But like, were you able to source like a new windshield? The, the, actually, the windscreen was the cheapest thing. It was like $180 for, 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 for a windscreen. It took two days to get here. Everything else is really hard, but that's cheaper than a modern car. That, that was, is that hilarious. Was, that was, I bet that you was this good. is probably more expensive, like something yeah, like this. Yeah, yeah. Well, well I, I actually had it made a mistake a week ago. I had it on the hoist and I lifted it into the roof of my garage oh, no. and dented and dented the uh, the roof of the car, oh, but no. thankfully I missed the rear windscreen. And like, look, if I, if that had broken, I would have been really. But it's okay. See, now you're a body guy. You can fix your own yeah, body work now. That's it, yeah. <laughs> if you didn't point that out, which by the way, I wouldn't have noticed it. No, this... no. It, it, I, I got away reasonably clean for for a, for a you know. Yeah, for, I think I honestly think a paintless dent removal person could probably. Get I, it I out. think I think it probably can yeah, get it yeah. out. So that's the. Th this I really like this uh, <laughs> yeah. sticker. This is kind of like your motto, huh? Yeah, that's it. That's... It may not be perfect, but it's home built. This is really important. Yeah, yeah. Well, that, that's it. I, I get the satisfaction out of doing things myself, and this is what it is. Yeah, it's. This is my third project. I did uh, uh, an old Porsche 911, and then I did a Datsun 240Z. And then this. So, so this is the third one that I've I've done. And so it's been four. What years. do you do with those? Do you sell them or do you keep I've them? I've still got the 911, and the Datsun is actually one of my viewers came over from Phoenix and bought it and shipped it back to America. So, it's, so, it's, so it's, no yeah, way. It's, and now, over, what a crazy over journey. Yeah. So, but you, with this one, I can imagine you're probably going to enjoy. Yes, I plan on keeping it. I've had lots of people offer to buy it, and I do not want to sell it. I put too much blood, sweat, and tears into this car to build it to to use it it means more to you yeah exactly I, I i mean i built every single part of it so i know every single thing and so the engine itself is stock but yes. of course i'm assuming that maybe it's a little freed up it being standalone yeah that may help it i mean it's got a got a got a, a reasonably free flowing exhaust the headers are a bit tighter than standard so that may restrict it a little bit because I, there's no way to make tune length headers in this car. Like, it was just getting any headers coming out was 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 the challenge. But this weighs less than a 360 anyway, so so By a lot. yeah, so so it should 
it should be plenty quick enough for, for, for this old car. So then what do you think this wood dyno at? I don't remember how much they made. Standard, that engine's a 400 horsepower engine. Okay. Like, like, so at the wheels, probably a standard 360 is low 300 horsepower, something like that. So if I'm even in that ballpark, I'd be more than happy. It's still three times what this power, the power this originally made. So, yeah. Incredible. What a beautiful build. Thank you Thank so you. much for showing us thanks, this thanks build. For, uh, thanks yeah. for having a look. So if uh, if everybody wants to check out the backlog. Home, yeah, Home Built of, by Jeff is is uh, is my, my channel. And yeah, so if you guys want to see how this was built step by step, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go There's, check out that. Get a huge long list. Get your popcorn out and just... Spend, yeah, yeah. spend you, time on the couch watching. You, this. you spend a lot of time. Yeah. But, uh, there's, there's, yeah, there's an episode every week, and there's 198 episodes so far on on, on this build. So yeah, it's amazing. Uh, it's a long way to get here. Good job. I can't wait to see it run. Thanks. Hey, thanks for watching. If you want to support us directly, go to LarryChenPrints.com. I print and sign every single one of these. This is the perfect gift, or it's the perfect piece of art for your wall.